Deo Deo Daylight come and me won't go home De Misa de misa de misa de misa de misa de What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rock Game Reviews. I decided I was going to start every episode with me singing something from the thing that I watched. I watched so much damn shit with song. <laughs> or I'll come up with a song that's relevant to it. And today, people, today, um, we are going to be discussing... Beetlejuice! So Beetlejuice, my wife and I saw Beetlejuice a few weeks ago at the Winter Garden. We have this beautiful playbill rapport where the only way is up. And Beetlejuice is a fantastically fun good time. Um, if you have a chance to see Beetlejuice, go see Beetlejuice. You are running out of time. You might actually be out of time. It ends in June. Go see Beetlejuice. Hurry, 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 because it ends in June. They're losing the uh, the Winter Garden Theater um, due to uh, Donald Trump. I don't fucking know. Uh, <laughs> but Beetlejuice, uh, it's the story you know. It's the story you love with some changes for the stage version of the show. Um, fantastically, fantastically done. Beetlejuice is based on a book by Scott Brown and Anthony King, and um, the music and the lyrics for this musical were produced by Eddie Perfect, and they were perfect. It's got some of the songs from the, the I, I believe it's a 90, it might be 80s, uh, but it's the, the, the 90s Beetlejuice movie, um, and it's got influences, I think, from both the movie and the animated, the, the television animated series. I don't know if you ever saw the television animated series Beetlejuice, where Lydia became Becomes friends with Beetlejuice of some sort. I haven't seen it in a very long time since I was basically less than 10 years old is when I saw it when I was growing up in the 90s watching cartoons on Nickelodeon. I think it was a Nickelodeon cartoon so it couldn't have been as dark as this but I like a lot of the changes that I saw here with the you know with the production of the show. Um, Alex Brightman makes a fan Fantastic Beetlejuice. You know, he does the voice really well. It's almost like an energetic chain smoke lady. I'm Beetlejuice, everybody. You know, <laughs> I don't know how he does that. Because <clears throat> just doing that for that five seconds that I just did that really hurt my esophageal tubes and my tonsils and laryngitis or whatever's in there, I don't know. Uh, but he does a really good job as Beetlejuice. And on that same token, uh, foil to his character, maybe not foil, I don't know. Sophia Ann Caruso does a fantastic job as the young Lydia Dietz. I don't remember everybody else's name in the production, I'm so sorry, but I do have the playbill. So I'll probably just go through it as I'm going through the thing to, um... Carrie Butler and David Josephberg play the couple, um, what are their names? Uh, Barbara and Adam. Um, that, you know, if you know the story of Beetlejuice, they don't have a family. They are kind of like, life isn't ready for us to have a family yet. We're not ready. And then they die. Um, in this, the subtle tweaks here, Beetlejuice, I don't know if this is how the book was, but Beetlejuice steals their Book of the Dead. So they don't know, the Book of the Newly Deceased, right? And they don't know to go to the afterworld. So they stay in their own house and they try to haunt the new people that move in, the Deetses, right? Lydia Deets, her dad, and then the mother that plays her soon-to-be stepmother. Um, and they try to work with Beetlejuice to haunt the new family to get them out of the house. It doesn't work because Beetlejuice is kind of a jerk. Um, eventually, Lydia meets the Deeses and she tries to get... She, they try to get her help. She tries to get her help because she's dealing with the death of her mother. And her father uh, isn't really kind of... He, he isn't really dealing with the death. He's just trying to move on too fast. And Lydia just wants to sit in the moment and remember her mother. And she wants a father to connect with. So she acts out in ways that a teenager would um, as a depressed teenager. And the movie deals with some very heavy things like dealing with death, dealing with anxiety, dealing with depression. And, you know, the death of a loved one can be traumatic for anyone, especially a girl Lydia's age in the show. She's like a kid in this, uh, in the, in this Broadway production. But Lydia... 
you know, she, she's dealing with it. She meets the Dietzes and she works with Beetlejuice. Eventually, you know, she, Beetlejuice, 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 hilarity ensues. He comes out, he tries to, you know, expel the father. But I like what this does. I like what this show does differently than the movie that I saw when I was a kid and how it makes uh, Lydia team up with Beetlejuice, almost reminiscent of that car that 90s cartoon. And Lydia, uh, you know, is she scares her father away. She's successful, but she's still feeling empty um, with the void of missing her mother. Um, and her and Beetlejuice's camaraderie during the time when they are comrades is really funny. It's also, you know, very uncomfortable. Um, a lot of the topics that they are talking about, you know, there's a scene where she's about to commit suicide. Um, and it's, you know, it's like, uh, I'm a little uncomfortable here. And, you know, Beetlejuice being so many years uh, Lydia senior. Lydia is in this show. She's 18 in real life, which is still really, really young, um, but technically an adult. But in the show, she is portraying a child and Beetlejuice is like, I know, I'll marry her. And it's this really creepy, uncomfortable scene. <laughs> It's really wacky. Um, and I probably don't do it justice by just talking about it. But you kind of have to see it. It's a, at the end of the day, it's a very, very quality musical. The music and the singing talent in this is so good. Even though Sophia Ann Caruso is just 18, I think she has such a fantastic voice. But she cannot top Alex Brightman's performance in this. He really does steal and carry the show. He's the heartbeat of the show. He is Beetlejuice. And I think Alex Brightman does a fantastic job in the movie. Um, Carrie Butler and David Joseph do a good job with their songs. They're light and playful um, to contrast against Beetlejuice's really dark tone. Um, some favorites from the show come back, or from the, from the, some favorites in this come back from the movie. Uh, you know, the day oh day oh all right, banana, rah, 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 rah. and then um, the other one is a uh, shake, 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 sonata, shake it all the time. You know, those kind of make appearance, but then there's some standout uh, songs in this, like uh, when Lydia is singing Dead Mom, Dead Mom, Dead Mom. She <laughs> it's this really dark thing, but she's singing this really kind of funny dark song and that's always been something about the story and the characters of Beetlejuice that I really like. I love these sort of dark things contrasted with the humor because if you can't laugh at it then does it exist? Mm -hmm. If it exists it's funny um, to somebody somewhere or something. Um, not saying that death is funny but the way people react to death and the way people walk around it and tiptoe around it, this movie kind of plays with it on different levels, right down to her potential suicide, to her lost one, to her going into the world of the dead at some points in the in this Broadway show. I probably said movie through this whole dang on thing. Um, but all of the performances are great, the story is fun, and the music is fantastic. So I definitely give uh, Beetlejuice a see it. Go see it. See it, see it, see it. I hope it's like, I hope it gets so popular that it gets revived on the thing, but you know, it is what it is. Dead mom, dead mom. I'll never say your name. You're never Gotta say my name. <laughs> A great musical, go see it.